Hello. We follow our AGM with a range of presentations to help people with their knowledge and understanding of HSP. After each talk, the presenters are happy to take questions from the audience. In 2020, we ran these presentations virtually, and this video is a selection of the questions asked, mostly through the Zoom chat pane. You can find a link to the presentation itself in the comments below. And I'd like to give thanks once again to those presenters for taking the time to talk to us and then to answer all of the questions asked. Enjoy. I noticed sometimes you said paraparesis and sometimes you said paraplegia. Is there a difference between the two? No, there is no difference in the two. And the terms are different sometimes in the US and the UK. And some papers you read, they say especially paraparesis and some papers you read cause paraplegia. What sort of interventions are you using for pain management? The standard patient's management will include pain prevention. It could include various types of drugs that we use. We use amitriptyline, nortriptyline, gabapentin, pregabalin. And in addition to use of the medications, we will also look into why the pain is coming. And some patients might have a dysfunctional or slightly abnormal walking or gait. So correcting their posture and helping with the right walking aid. Maybe their walking stick is slightly shorter than it should be. And if none of these actions are helpful, then the patients will be referred to the pain clinic. They will have access to massage and acupuncture and hydrotherapy. If pain is significantly affecting their mood and the psychological functions, then they might also be offered counseling. Someone is asking if you could repeat that list of pain-reducing drugs for arthritis. They are not painkillers, so that means if you have pain, if you take it, it might not go away. You need to take these medications over about three or four weeks for the benefit to start becoming apparent. So we normally start with medications like amitriptyline, nortriptyline, and pregabalin, gabapentin, and if these are not effective, then we need to investigate at the same time why these patients are having pain. Is that because they have arthritis or joint wear and tear? Are they having spasms? So if they have spasms and stiffness, we need to think of baclofen and tizanidine, and then of course move on to Botox thereafter or baclofen pump. So these are all coming in combination. Uh, usually when somebody with HSP has a lot of pain, there are other complications to be addressed as well. There's a fair number of members who talk about bowel problems. Are bowel problems more common in particular types of HSP? Bowel problem is a huge issue. It is not specific to any uh, specific gene, but it has been seen in all the common genes I have seen. SPG, spastin, paraplegin, SPG11, they're all complain of bladder dysfunction and it's a difficult problem to treat. You put up a shot in your screen which had SPG in the middle and lots of overlapping conditions as well. If someone sits in that overlap, do they have one or the other or both? Let's take for an example a, a gene like SPG7. That can cause pure HSP in one patient. One family member has that and the other family member has pure ataxia. So it could be a long spectrum now, if somebody has pure HSP, with time, whether that person will develop cerebellar ataxia is a possibility. And I've seen that happening. So it is possible that they could travel along the spectrum, but what predicts somebody might travel along or not is yet unknown. It is a bit unwise if you are mildly affected pure HSP to think that or in your body to look for any abnormalities uh, and that can stress you out and make you feel anxious. We've got a question around the variation in the types of SPG. Are they different around the world? Indeed, this is underpinned by genetic changes within the same gene as well. For example, in our cohort of SPG7 patients, almost all of them who have a certain genetic change have a long-standing British ancestry. And this particular change, when it is not there, we found that these patients have migrated to the UK, either this generation or a couple of generations before. 
And when you look at the Swedish or Italian populations, the composition of the gene changes in SPG7, for example, is very different to the UK. In your presentation, you showed SPG7, and you showed lots of different mutations of that one gene. Is that generally the case with all of the different SPG designations, that they actually cover any change to a particular gene, but there might be multiple changes to that gene? Correct. Most genes can have mutations in various places, but then there are also places called mutation hotspots. For example, in SPG7, there's a position in the gene called C1529. That place is almost always mutated in patients with long-standing British ancestry. Certain genes which are extremely rare but causes very severe phenotype tend to also have the same mutation happening in the same patients in the UK. But large genes like SPG7, SPG4, mutations can be anywhere in the gene. My symptoms veering off the norm. My neurologist wants to investigate possible MND. Is that something you see with some patients with HSP? What is important for me to know is whether he has a genetic diagnosis, because then I can share some information I know about certain genes. There is a condition called primary lateral sclerosis, PLS variant of motor neuron disease which is very similar to HSP, which has spasticity in the legs for very long years. And then they can sometimes develop changes in the small muscles in the hands and stuff like that. When that happens, they need to have a new nerve conductivity test, what we call EMG and nerve conduction studies to understand whether there is a problem with their motor neurons in the spinal cord. Apart from that, for example, genes like SPG11 has been shown to share in their disease spectrum MND. So some of the HSPs can go on to develop MND. Do you have an opinion on the effectiveness of supplements that support mitochondria such as coenzyme Q10? Is there any evidence that might be useful in HSP? There is poor evidence in HSP, but I look after a large cohort of mitochondrial patients who have muscle weakness and muscle disorders. Unfortunately, coenzyme Q10 cannot be prescribed on the NHS. So I have to ask the patient to buy it over the counter. So uh, most of the patients with mitochondrial diseases, they take coenzyme Q10. So I would say, yes, they could do the same. Is there any evidence that cannabis oil is effective? In my cohort, there are patients who are using it and they say that they benefit from it. Someone has gone onto a gluten-free diet and that significantly helped. Is it common to have things like that? Some of the patients we have noted have gluten sensitivity and it has been shown going on a gluten-free diet for this particular subset of patients has significantly helped. Currently, we are doing a study. We are looking into the interaction between gluten and SPG7 patients. Thank you so much, Adam, for inviting me and, and the patients are my strength. So thank you very much for listen, listening to me and have a nice weekend. Thank you very much. Right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody. Cheerio.